But let's move into some Game Boy Advance. There is so much that we can play. And I can tell you if you're going to be playing these games, it runs absolutely great when it comes to, let's say, the 8-bit, 16-bit stuff, handheld, you name it. There is so much that we can play with this. Absolutely great. Press start doesn't do anything, by the way, if you're wondering. A lot of devices do have that. Then you can mess around with it. Okay, let's go exit and let's go back to a different emulator. Yes, you, you know, the 8-bit, 6-bit stuff, that runs all fine on this. It's absolutely a great overall experience. But when it comes to PlayStation 1, here we're going to have absolutely overall great performance. Yeah, absolutely fun to play these old school games. And they also added the background music, so that is absolutely cool. And you really need to get used to the buttons, because if you want to do a drifting, it's going to be slightly difficult to do. Running on native resolution. This is really smooth. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, messed it up myself. And indeed, the rumble function has also been enabled because now I'm basically bashing into the wall and can feel the, the, the handheld like vibrating. That's absolutely cool, man. That's really cool. With PlayStation Portable, we do have bezels to of the resolution of PlayStation Portable being different of the screen we're actually using. So they adjusted it like that. Not a big of a deal. You can see already, like into the intro, that we're having some minor hiccups, and that's not going to be any different. When you're going to be playing throughout the game. So if you're going to be playing some God of War, I know for sure that's going to be unplayable with a lot of men less than many of these places portable games that are not great at all. And way too let's say difficult to emulate on chips like these. But some of the games are playable, including the places portable minis. So when pressing the F button, what is interesting that we do have the option to mess around with the settings. But what is weird that they're putting like this on rendering resolution two times. That makes no sense. And also, it makes it way more difficult. So, okay, they have two times resolution, but they have frame skip set to two. Okay, yeah. So you can also tinker with that. And now we're getting so much overall better performance. So even this device isn't really made for tinkering, but places portable, we can still tinker. But of course, let's try some Sega Dreamcast, one of my favorite devices. But the thing is, you do some, some minor glitching in the menu, but nothing really in, let's say, very bad to see that the, the completely destroys the overall experience of the game. Vibration function also enabled, you can just feel the thing going crazy with vibration. And the audio of this thing is amazing. The two speakers, I'm so glad they made the decision to put it in there. Alright, so let's see. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the D-pad. Well, it is playable, like direction, everything seems to be working fine. This is one of those games that I personally prefer to get a joystick. But the audio, everything, visual part, it's working great. It's absolutely amazing. The music, the audio, the display, I like it a lot. But if you're going to be booting up the through the retro arc, yep, you're going to be having a different experience. We're having like sidebars now, so it's absolutely great that we don't have like some widescreen shenanigans going on. Another thing also, if you're going to be pressing, you can see that retro arc is opening up, and here we can mess around with some settings if you want to. Man. I'm just listening to the soundtrack, just enjoying myself the soundtrack and the way how the two speakers sound, because this is great. I'm getting into the pinball vibe. <laughs> 